Welcome to Slaying Excel Dragons video number 21. Hey, these are the videos that accompany this book and we're still talking about chapter 5, Formula and Functions. We're going to talk about the insert function dialog box and how helpful it can be and we're going to talk about the future value function to calculate the future value on an investment. Alright, uh, we're in the Excel is Fun Start workbook that you can download from the link below the video and we're going to start on the sheet functions one. All right, so I'm going to click in cell uh, B8. I could have had a B8. Here's our situation. We got a lump sum of money, 14000 and we don't need to use it for five years. The CD contract says it pays 5.5% annual interest rate compounded quarterly. Our goal is to find a built-in function that will calculate what the CD will be worth when we withdraw it. So of course we type out a label for our formula input, assumed rate, years invested, and number of compounding periods per year for quarterly. First, before we look for function, I know that I can't use an annual rate directly to figure out how much interest I get each uh, quarter. So I need to take this annual rate and convert it to a period rate. Now I'm actually going to add format because these cells I always like to put some consistent color where there'll be a formula. The way we do that uh, to calculate quarterly rate is we simply take hey annual for all 12 months and divide it by 4. That'll give us our quarterly rate. 0 0.01. Now we're also going to need to know how many total periods. When you have an investment that's compounded quarterly, that means you will get, you know, uh, years times four, whatever that is, oh, 20. So there's 20 total periods for gathering interest. Each period they'll put some interest in and then the interest will uh, get paid on the accumulated interest. So we're simply going to say our years times our number of periods per year, 20. Now, we can go and hunt for a function. Now, you the, the formula in finance for this is not too hard. Um, there's a lot harder, uh, but you don't know it. So what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to search through Excel's almost uh, about 400 functions. That little button right there is insert function. There's an insert function there. There's also an insert function right there. I always use this because no matter what ribbon I am on, that'll give it to me. There's also a keyboard shortcut. As long as the cell where you want your function to go, you either click this or Shift F3. F insert function dialog, bo dialog box. Totally amazing. I'm just going to type investment and then hit enter or go. All right, and so the way it works is it's going to suggest some function. So NPV. Ooh, down here it tells you. So you can literally arrow through this whole list and read the suggested functions. So NPV returns the net present value and investment based on a discount rate. Oh, that's not what we need here. That's a pretty cool function though. I teach that in my finance classes. Uh, that's not it. So I'm going to read the next one. Returns the number of periods. Well, that's not either. either. That's a cool function, but we want total value of our investment. I'm going to click the down arrow, FE, returns the future value of an investment based on periodic constant payments and a constant interest rate. Well, our constant constant payment is just one lump sum at the beginning, but that looks like a good function, so I'm going to try it. I'm going to click OK. Now the functions argument dialog box is great. It lists the arguments right here with text box waiting for us to put either uh, values or cell references. Now, what's nice about this is so far in this book, almost every time we did a function, we used the screen tip and entered the arguments for our functions. But what's great about this is here's one argument, and there's a description down here. So if you didn't know what goes here for rate, you could read this. Is the interest rate per period, for example, use 6% divided by 4 for quarterly payments. So we already knew that and typed that into our cell over here, but is that? That's very convenient in case you didn't know. So what do we need to do? Well, first off, anytime there's a text box and there's this, this is called the collapse button. You click on it and it collapses it and it allows you to get a cell and then you uncollapse it. Now I'm just going to grab the title bar and slide it over to the side because I want to see uh, the 
our functions argument dialog box and all of our inputs. All right, so now we, with our cursor flashing, we simply click on, oh, which rate? This one, our period rate. Tab, NPER, hmm, I wonder what that is. Is the total number of payment periods in the investment. Okay, well, we already calculated that. Now, very important about finance functions. This is the future value. There's also a PMT, which we'll see a few videos ahead, and lots of other amazing finance functions. All of the periods have to be the same. So notice, rate was in quarterly. Periods, or NPER, number of quarters. So you got to be consistent with your periods. All right, so NPER, we click right there. Now notice it's kind of convenient over here. In some cases, uh, this will help you find a problem. It gives you a preview. I'm going to hit Tab and read down here. PMT is the payment made each period. Well, we don't have any payments. We have just one lump sum, so I'm going to hit Tab. Now, it's hard to tell right now, but if we were typing this out in a cell, we would have to remember to type a comma to skip an argument like this. But with a functions argument dialog box, it'll put it in automatically. We don't have to think, we just leave it blank. PV is the present value or lump sum amount of a series of future payments uh, and their worth now. Now, present value is the fancy finance term that just says, hey, if you're going to put a bunch of money in the bank, how much is it worth? What is the present value today? Well, it also helps that it says lump sum there. All right, so I'm going to, that's the amount right there. Hit tab, type is the value representing the timing of payment. Well, we don't have any periodic payments here, so we don't have to put that argument in. All right, so there's a preview, and there's a preview of our answer. Now, one very convenient thing about this dialog box, that's unformatted. That's formatted. That's convenient because we have seen the trouble you could get in with number formatting. This um, functions argument dialog box is not going to get tricked. Sure, we want to see the formatted result, but just in case it's something terribly wrong, there's the unformatted answer. Now, what in the world, why is this showing up negative? Well, in finance, these finance functions like FV and PMT that we'll see later, they understand cash flows. So anytime cash flow goes out of your wallet or purse, it is a negative. I don't like this number. If this is my future value, right, and it's negative, that means something's wrong. So anytime you see something like this, right here, absolutely awesome. The help, this blue link, help on this function, just amazing. So I'm going to click on it. I have learned more about functions from this dialog box than any uh, of any book everywhere, except for maybe uh, Mr. Excel's uh, in-depth Excel 2010. Well, it didn't pick that up, so I'm going to type FV here and enter. Financial functions. Oh, that's going to make me look. Oh, of course, this is not Google. Oh, there it is, FV function. Now, once you finally get to this, it is just, it's just awesome. It gives you a descript, uh, the function, a description, the syntax. Explanations use a little bit more than what they do in the uh, argument dialog box, but they give you some remarks and they even give you an example, right? And so if you read through all of this, especially when you get down here, it'll it'll tell you that present value on a future value investment is almost always negative, especially when you're investing. So just um, awesome help here. I'm going to go ahead and close this. So that means that we have to change our PV. We have to put a minus. Now watch the preview. I'm going to type a minus and now we see this is a minus and this is a positive. Now cash flow and finance, I know this isn't a finance class, uh, but cash flow and finance is always from the point of view of your wallet or purse. <laughs> if you're putting $14,000 in the bank, that's a negative out of your wallet into the bank, e even though it's still your money in the bank. It's still the flow of the cash is to the bank. This is positive. That means the flow is to you, $17,000. I'm going to click OK. Absolutely uh, great use 
Um, if you don't know a function, use the uh, insert function dialog box. Let's just take a look here. I'm going to hit F2 right here, and you can see how polite it was. I didn't have to remember that I'm supposed to type commas to skip arguments. It put it in for me. All right, um, in our next video, uh, we will look at a few different functions and see how to get even more help when you're really struggling with trying to get a function to work. All right, see you next video.